and welcome to the Immigration Bulletin. My name is Gus Shehab. I'm an immigration lawyer. I hope you're doing well and staying healthy. Today's topic is the top 10 reasons why a PERM application will be audited. And some of those things that are will be listed here in this video, I hope you'll find it useful. Some of those things we can avoid, others we cannot avoid. For those things that we cannot avoid, it is important to learn upfront that those things will cause the PERM application to be audited, and hence the processing times will be lengthy, so that we can take advanced planning to um, allot for the time, the additional time that the PERM application will be audited, and also to have sufficient documentation so that the audit will be successful. Why should we avoid uh, PERM audits? Um, well, we have to understand that once a PERM application is audited, there's between five to seven additional months of delays that will be caused by the review of the audit uh, documentation by the Department of Labor. So if we can avoid the audit, we should do that. Sometimes we cannot avoid it, as I'll describe here in a little bit. But you must understand that between 25 to 33 percent of PERM applications will be audited. Out of those, there's random audits. Um, in, in, in our firm, uh, our audit uh, uh, statistics are probably 2%. So 98% uh, of our cases are approved, uh, and that is because of extremely strict and careful planning and drafting of the PERM application. So um, I believe that that's the way to avoid audits if possible. Or sometimes you cannot avoid it if there is an ownership interest or if there's a family relationship uh, or uh, a language requirement uh, and you'll see in the video here I'll describe that but if you can avoid it you should do that you should do so uh, in order to decrease the processing time the first reason that I see often um, as to why perm labor certification application has been audited is frankly sloppy perm application drafting so some of our clients bring to us an application that has been audited and I take a look at it and I find that the application contains rambling position descriptions uh, and very lengthy run-on sentences in the special skills that cause the, the adjudicator, the, the Department of Labor officer, to basically scratch his or her head. So um, those things can be avoided by including succinct position descriptions and very, very direct and detailed but short special skills. Also, some of the things that cause a sloppy PERM application drafting is tailoring the PERM application to fit the foreign national's credentials. So you see that the minimum requirements are so detailed that they go overboard and they cause the analyst, the Department of Labor analyst, to think that this is not being uh, drafted in good faith. So that's another reason why the sloppy PERM application um, drafting will cause audit. Also, inconsistencies in the application itself. So if there are inconsistencies in the application, uh, that will cause the application to be audited. Um, the Department of Labor form is designed to flag out certain things that are said on, let's just say, page three and something else on page 10 that are inconsistent and that will cause a flag to be raised and the case will be audited. So it's important to make sure that the application is not drafted in a sloppy fashion. The second reason why a PERM application will be audited, that is a familial relationship between the foreign national and the company owners. So the regulations don't necessarily describe what is familial relationship but it is any family relationship relation between the foreign national and any owners in the company that is petitioning or filing the perm. That relationship can be blood related or in marriage. For example, if the foreign national is married to someone and her uncle owns the company, that is a familial relationship and there's a box on the application that has to be checked in order for the application to be proper, and that will trigger an audit, okay? Um, 
So if that's a situation and, and we've had those cases and we got them approved, the key is to show that the job offer is bona fide, that this is not uncle trying to do um, you know, the niece's husband's favor. There has to be documentation to show that this is a good faith uh, offer of employment. This is an example where you may not be able to avoid the audit, but must have documentation to show the, that the job offer is a real job and it's bona fide. The, thir the third reason why a PERM application may be audited, will be audited as a matter of fact, is if the foreign national owns an interest in the petitioning company. If, if the person who's being sponsored owns a percentage. There's a point where if the ownership interest is so great, and, and this is sort of a gray area, if it's more than 50%, then the case is, is hopeless. But if it's less than 50%, the question becomes whether there is a, a true employer-employee relationship, whether really the, the foreign national is so much in control of the organization that he or she becomes the employer and the employee at the same time. So there are ways, by the way, if a person uh, owns more than 50% to get the case approved, and that is through corporate documentation, proper corporate documentation that shows that the foreign national is completely divested of any management. In, in other words, there's a board of directors that can fire the foreign national, albeit the fact that he owns or he or she owns more than 50%. Those cases are difficult cases. So we recommend that the foreign national has less than 50%. And that could be very much doable to document that there is a bona fide job offer. The fourth reason why a PERM labor certification application may be audited is if the minimum educational requirement for the job is less than a bachelor's degree. And that usually happens in uh, positions such as restaurant managers um, or chefs or any kind of position that does not require a bachelor's degree, but it may require two years of education um, or uh, two years of, uh, of training. So those types of positions, uh, those types of PERM applications will more than likely be audited. And there's nothing that we can do about it. So we just have to make sure that we plan and make certain that we keep good records of all the recruitment, all the applicants, and any um, interviews that were done with any U.S. workers to make sure that everybody was disqualified for the job. The fifth reason why a PERM application may be audited is if the minimum requirement of the position includes a foreign language skill. And I get that sometimes from some of my clients and they say, you know, my, you know, the foreign national speaks Hungarian and we need someone who speaks Hungarian in order for us to talk to some of our Hungarian clients. If you require a language skill as a minimum requirement, the case will be audited because, you know, most of the time, it, it, most, most foreign nationals have a language skill. Uh, unless you speak English as a native language, Everybody who is a foreign national being sponsored for PERM labor certification speaks a foreign language, and the Department of Labor knows that. And so we don't want to include a foreign language as a minimum requirement unless we really have to, and I've done that before. I have done it for an architect who is designing uh, healthcare facilities in China, and she had to speak Chinese in order for her to do the plans in Chinese language. That case was audited and we had backup documentation and a business necessity to make sure to explain to them that, look, yes, a foreign language is 100% needed and required for the job. So this is something that we must uh, avoid if we can. Um, and if we, if we cannot, then we have to show there's a bona fide job related need for the foreign language requirement. The sixth reason why your PERM application may be uh, audited is because your required experience gained with the sponsoring employer. Requiring experience gained with the sponsoring, with the PERM sponsoring employer. That would be called an after acquired skill. That's not allowed. Any minimum requirement for the job, for the PERM application, must have been gained by the foreign national prior to his or her employment prior to his or her employment. Any skill that you require that the foreign national learn with the sponsoring employer 
is called an after acquired skill and that's not allowed unless the only time it's allowed is if the foreign national occupies two positions with the same with the sponsoring employer that what we call them substantially dissimilar substantially dissimilar meaning that he was he or she was in one position and that position is so different than the second position that they are so distinct that the skills learned with one is not related to the second position a stupid example is someone that was hired as an accountant and later became the president of the company so these two substantially dissimilar positions so any skills learned while being an accountant can be used this is an after acquired skill with the sponsoring employer um, can be used as minimum requirement for the president position okay so that's that's one thing to that we can add that we can do normally i avoid it because it's not a good idea generally speaking it will cause the case to be audited and, and delayed so we can use some other minimum requirements for the position that don't necessarily have, that are not necessarily after acquired the seventh reason why a perm application may be audited, something we can avoid, is if the job requirements are deemed not normal, not normal to the occupation, that you're asking for a minimum requirements that the Department of Labor feels that this position should not require these, these types of minimum requirements. An example is requiring a PhD for someone who is doing bookkeeping. That's going way over, that's above above and beyond what the position will handle. Um, the Department of Labor actually has a, a job bank and criteria set for each position so, for, so that the, the, the practitioners in this, in this field can only require what the Department of Labor will tolerate as the maximum minimum requirements for the position, the maximum number of experience, the maximum education for this position. So, so then if you, if you exceed that, you know, if the practitioner is not experienced, if the immigration lawyer is not experienced in this area, um, then they can go above that and that will trigger an audit and, possible, and requiring what we call a business necessity. The employer has to show why they need that skill in order for the employer to conduct its business in an ordinary fashion. And that's something we want to avoid. It will, it will cause an increase in the perm processing time. The eighth reason why a perm application may be audited is if there were layoffs within the six months prior to the filing of the perm application in the same or similar occupation, in the same or related occupation, okay? So uh, what we have to do is to confirm, number one, if the layoffs were in related occupations. So if the position is for an engineer, for example, that's the perm uh, labor certification position. But the layoffs were for, you know, in the call center for people who answer the phones. That's not related. So those types of, uh, so we should answer no in the box in the application that says, were there any layoffs in, in, this, in this occupation or related? We should say no to this question. Um, but if there were, if there were layoffs, if there are engineers who were layoff, la laid off, then what we have to, then the case will be audited, and what we have to show is documentation that the, the job was offered to U.S. workers. The job was offered to U.S. workers, and none of them accepted or were qualified if they applied for the job. Reason number nine why a perm application will be audited, and that is if the position description included in the perm application included a combination of occupations, a combination of occupations. For instance, combining uh, an accounting position with marketing position, you know, marketing duties and accounting duties. And this happens sometimes when the immigration lawyer is not experienced, that they don't review the position description to make sure that there are no extraneous duties in the position, and that would cause the application to be audited. And if it is audited, it will take more, more time, um, and uh, the employer will be required to document, again, a business necessity, why they need a combination of, of, of uh, occupations. The final, final one, and uh, this sometimes happens, uh, again, uh, it's part of this poor drafting in a way, which is requiring uh, alternative educational or experience requirements. Um, for example, you would say, must have a master's degree or uh, in the alternative, a bachelor's degree plus five years of experience. 
So if you do that, the equivalent must be um, the, the alternative minimum requirements have to be equivalent to each other. So a master's degree, according to the Department of Labor, by the way, not USCIS, is equivalent to a bachelor's degree plus two years of experience. So a master's is equivalent to bachelor plus two. So it makes it a very complex drafting. It it's, uh, should not be done, in my opinion, um, because that will more than likely cause the case to be audited and will take more time. So with that, I conclude my uh, video. I hope you found it useful. And please don't forget to like, share, and to uh, hit the subscribe button in the bottom.